Hello, I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV7. The show is Fireside Chat. We're delighted you're with us today. Every week we bring in different guests who live in the community and tell you about what they're doing in their role in government, or what they might be doing in private enterprise, or perhaps volunteer work. And it's a great chance for you to put the face and the name together. So if you have to call them or email and contact them, say, hey, wait a minute, we've got something in common. And it just breaks down those barriers. I'm delighted to have with us today Jamie Gilbert. Jamie, congratulations on your job. Now Thank tell everybody you, what your job in the county is now first. Okay, I am the new Economic Development Director, and which <laughs> basically means I am responsible for trying to help facilitate the creation of new jobs and new investment here in the county. And good. And we heard all through the campaign from all the candidates uh, in our recent county commissioner last uh, race that that's one of the biggest issues. We want to bring economic development here. We want to get somebody who can bring it, attract it, and manage it in a proper way. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. You're going to have a great time. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Now, Jamie, let's do this. Let's let everyone get to know you a little bit. All right? We'll pretend like we're on the front porch here drinking a couple of iced teas. All right. Uh, born and raised where? I was born and raised in Baltimore. Okay, oh, in so you're a Maryland guy. I'm oh, a Maryland guy. Okay, correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, I grew up in the northeast side of the city in the Hamilton right. neighborhood. Okay. Uh, I'm what I call a second generation economic developer. My father was a city planner. He was in Baltimore. In, in Baltimore. Okay. He was an economic developer and then he was a private developer. So he worked in Baltimore City. He worked for a couple of years in Prince George's County and then came back to Baltimore. So this is in your DNA. You had no County. chance. <laughs> no, I know. I got hooked on it when I was a kid. Okay. And, How about and, Go ahead. and really it was what what hooked me was the the, the impact that I saw by creating those jobs and helping communities prosper. I mean, there's lots of ways that government says that they can help. But I believe that the, probably the biggest, most significant factor is creating meaningful jobs for individuals, and especially ones that are right in the community, like we're trying to do here yeah. in Queen Anne's County. If we keep our workforce at home, they're more invested in what happens here. So we won't have that racetrack on Route 8 every morning. Absolutely. Right? Make life easier. Jamie, let me back it up. So dad, from dad, you get this whole idea of planning, economic growth, and management. How about right. mom? Uh, mom was uh, a receptionist okay. for an insurance company and some banks, all, uh, in Baltimore. all in Baltimore area. So I went to uh, I went to actually two high schools. I went to Baltimore Polytechnic Institute okay. for my freshman and sophomore year, and then my parents moved out to Howard County. All right. And I graduated from Mount Hebron High School in Ellicott oh, City. Oh, great school. Okay. Now, uh, siblings. Before. Siblings, I have an only child. You're like me. Well, congratulations. <laughs> we rule the world, we right? We do. Okay. We do. And it's, uh, it's a challenge because as an only child, I, I, you know this, Fred, you want to do everything on your own sure. sometimes, and there's not enough hours to do that. You're pretty independent, aren't yes. you? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, mom and dad, okay, you move out to Howard County. As a high school kid, sports, theater, what you do, what kept you out I, I of trouble in my, high school? My, my passion was writing. Oh, okay. And uh, I really did want to be a journalist. That was what I kind of grew up, even though I loved economic development, mm -hmm. my, my love and passion was writing. Really? And so uh, when I went to UABC for, for undergrad school, I was okay. a political science major, which right. requires a lot of writing. Yes, it does. Um, and I worked for the radio station there, which was where the campus radio station, right, okay. WMD, which is where Commissioner Comfort worked. He was the news director. Right. Now I know you knew each other. Uh, we had to have because okay. we dealt with, but but it's it, we don't really remember each other. It was okay. it was it you was, knew he was there and he knew it, exactly. Name. I was okay. a DJ, so oh, okay. I was spinning records and he was doing news. Okay, so we we probably crossed paths a couple times, uh, but we don't remember each other. Okay, but, now let me go back to high school. Uh, high school newspaper. Or yes. Just write, okay. Sports high school newspaper, yearbook, all those everything. things. Uh, I played basically youth athletics, so okay. I played baseball mm -hmm. and I played football, but not for the high school level or anything right. like that. You were into writing. I was into writing and and and, and the journal. It must be a single child thing. I was a journalism major when I started college. So <laughs> now, let's go back to your radio. So you're sure. you're at the uh, University of Maryland, Bal uh, Baltimore campus, yes, right? Sir. Talk about uh, the radio gig, uh, rock and roll, favorite rock music. Rock and roll, alternative now, this, music. Help me out, 70s, 80s. This would have been, uh, I, would, I started at UMBC in 1986. Okay. So I worked there my freshman year. And I also worked for the student newspaper, The Retriever, that All year right. as well. Covered uh, Governor Schaefer, or Mayor Schaefer, when he was running for governor. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was a great experience. But when I was at UMBC, 
as a DJ, my music portfolio was was kind of unique. I was into the alternative music. If you remember back then, WHFS, sure, ninety nine point one, sure. that style of music. So the bands that I liked the most were were bands like REM. REM was my favorite. Okay. Still is my favorite band. We'll get so, you a job with W R N R nine if you need a part time. There you go. Uh, there actually, you. they have their tower in our county. You know, really? Yes, not it's in Graysonville. All right. Okay. So anyway, you're a DJ there. Give it a go with the and, and, a stuff. And, a, and a political science major. Okay. And so I really developed my passion there for you know politics. And I thought it you know it was a good profession. It's for a major and to open up the doors for whether I wanted to go into law school or I wanted to go sure. into journalism or wanted to go into economic development. Right, okay. So I graduated from UMBC in 1990 and went to pursue my master's degree in state regional planning at Clemson. Oh, okay. And went down south. I went down south, yeah. and that's where my father had gone to school. So okay. he had a degree in architecture and planning. So not only, you know, now I'm a second-generation economic developer, I was the first second-generation student in the master's program at in planning at Clemson also. Okay. So it was a nice path, and I went through the program and graduated in 92, and then I came back to Maryland, and uh, you know I've been working in economic development ever since. What did you do when you graduate? Uh, MBA? Uh, not an MBA. What'd you? Uh, what masters it? in city regional planning. Okay. Uh, and so I had I had actually hoped to stay down in South, you Carolina. Stay in South Carolina. I was engaged, and uh, my wife was a year behind me in school, okay. and so I had planned on staying down there. But in '92, the job market was a little tough. And uh, there happened to be an opening for an economic development coordinator with the Cecil County Office of so Economic Development. So you came back to Maryland. So I came back to Maryland. And uh, I spent two years with Cecil County. And then an opportunity opened up in Baltimore County, which was closer to home to my family. Now you married? Were you married? Uh, yes. At that yeah, time, when married. I moved to Baltimore okay. County, we got married in '93, okay. and so in '94 I went to work for Baltimore County Economic. All right. Now, what were you doing, like, with Baltimore County? Give me some examples. Uh, Baltimore County was a fantastic opportunity. I mean, it must have been a boom. Was it a boom county at that time, or am I? It was. Yeah, it was. Okay. There was a lot going on on all areas of the county, and and there were three. Uh, project managers, we were called business development representatives, mm -hmm. and each of us had a territory or county. And I had Southwest Baltimore County. Okay, so Help that me. I don't know what what was you mean. Southwest city. Baltimore County would have been the Woodlawn area where Social Security Administration's offices are, and then it was all the way south down to Catonsville where UMBC is, right. and then down to the very heavy industrial area like Washington Boulevard, Hollins Ferry Road. Mm -hmm. For. So I got a real a wide range of, of companies to work with. Everything from your Class A office users that were looking at some of the business parks over in the Woodlawn area to the research park that was built out at UMBC. They also had the uh, UMBC Technology Center, which was an old uh, Lockheed Martin building mm -hmm. that they acquired, which we helped build with technology companies. And then we worked on the planning of the whole research park. So you got a go. It was a nice baptism by fire, right? Oh, you yeah. A little bit of everything. It was. Right? It was. Okay. And then the very traditional industrial companies, some of them heavy manufacturing, uh, which today you wouldn't really consider heavy. But one of the one of the one of the best projects that that I worked on, and it, unfortunately it's not there any longer. But the old Holland's Ferry Road, uh, G. Holloman Brewing sure, facility sure. that was there it was vacant. And we worked with Washington Quality Foods, which is located in Baltimore County, but down in the Ellicott City area. Ellicott City, everybody thinks Howard County, okay. but there's also an address for Ellicott City in, in Baltimore County down there on Frederick Road. And they make uh, flour and muffin mix. Well, we worked to put a deal together for the redevelopment of that brewery site. It was a Brownfields property. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Queen Anne's County and redevelopment mm -hmm. opportunities, I get excited about that. a lot of parallels, that. a lot of parallels. Absolutely. So that project created about 125 jobs. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure after time what happened with that facility. It was there for a number of years, and then they sold the property. I think they consolidated some operations. Uh, but that's an but example you got it going. of redevelopment. Yeah. The, other, the other project that I was very, uh, it wasn't a huge project, but I look back on it with pride now, was if you're familiar with uh, uh, some of the breweries, sure. seven or heavy. Probably two for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Heavy Seas Brewing, which used to be okay. Clipper City, I've heard of, okay. is located there in uh, on Holland's Ferry Road. Also, they went into a building and they realized once they signed the lease for that building, that they didn't have the zoning to operate a brewery. The county, Baltimore County, had you know didn't want these big 
breweries like the G. Heilman Brewing Company, and so they had basically zoned them out of existence. You couldn't do any brewing. Mm -hmm. And the brewing industry had changed where you have these micro brews, these craft brews that are much smaller sure. in nature. And so we got a call one day from the company, from uh, Hugh Sisson, saying, hey, I need your help. I just leased this building. And <laughs> I, I haven't got a permit. Right. So we ended up working with our planning and zoning department to say, look, let's go ahead and look at our zoning code and figure out a way to help some of these smaller breweries that are, that are now emerging all over the country right. to be able to grow and prosper here in Baltimore County. So we went and got some new zoning in place, and they were able to go into that building. Kind of changed and kept them in business, and it could attract other smaller breweries. Absolutely. Good for you. Okay. So, oh. All right. Good you, no, so where after that? Uh, at that point, I spent a number of years with Baltimore County, okay. and there was a new regional economic development organization coming into existence called the Greater Baltimore Alliance. Okay. First time they had a regional group marketing uh, all of the Baltimore this area, whole area. Counties, except area. for Queen Anne's County, which still is not in. <laughs> Get, us in. Get us we, in, Jane. And, and that's something we plan on changing because it will lift the profile of this community significantly right. and help bring business here. Right. But uh, Queen Anne's County was not part of that, so it included. You know, Hartford, Baltimore, Carroll, uh, Howard, and Anne Arundel County, plus the city of Baltimore. Big part of Maryland. Absolutely. Big part of Maryland. Absolutely. So our job was to bring in, they were created, they recruited me as a corporate location manager, and I worked with all those jurisdictions to help recruit business to the area. Some of the big companies we brought in, Ameritrade, mm -hmm. who have been a whole technical services center with about 200 employees. Uh, there was a project, you probably heard of Orbital Sciences, sure, sure. and AAA, it was okay. one of the first uh, navigation systems for cars. And uh, you all brought them? Brought them in, in, right. They went to Anne Arundel County, so we had a number of projects helped with some existing industry projects uh, to save some companies that were looking to leave. So we had a lot of success, but I was only there for, for less than a year when I came home one day and my wife was in tears and she had been out shopping and she's a Southern girl from South Carolina. Uh -oh. Somebody's homesick? Homesick, uh -oh. Miss Southern. Jamie, you're done, you're cooked. <laughs> well, I told her she loved, she would love Queen Anne's County because I, the people here are, are a lot like the folks sure, down south sure. in terms of, of, of the personality and how nice they are. And the pace of life we have. Absolutely. There, yeah. So she was homesick, and I said, okay, we will look to move back. And at that point, I started applying for some jobs down You're there. You're a good husband. You were a good yes, husband. I was. <laughs> Thank you. So no. we moved to South Carolina. Okay. Took a job in Greenwood, South Carolina as just another, another project manager. When the county next door, Abbeville County, small county, population 27,000, mm -hmm. uh, rural county, no interstate, uh, but a good little downtown with a opera house and, and, and nice little restaurants yeah. and things. Yeah, oh, Fort, yeah, Fort Square, all that, you know, the traditional southern mm -hmm. town. Mm -hmm. uh, they had an opening for the economic development director. And the director who had left to go to Virginia said, hey, you really should apply for this job. I think you would make a really good director sure. who could help the community. So I applied for the job and was hired and spent you know, five years as their director, and we had a lot of success. That's um, a small community. We'd say 27,000. 27,000. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We're almost twice that, right? I mean, yeah, ex exactly. Right? And the wife is happy. Wife You're is happy. Says, Everybody's satisfied. Okay. Everybody's doing great. Um, Where'd you head from there? <laughs> Back to Greenwood. Okay. Right. <laughs> My second time in Greenwood. Okay. Um, I got recruited to be the business development director for the new director that came in. Okay. And all he wanted me to focus on was recruiting companies and working with the existing industry. It was you know, a step up in salary and, 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 and really focusing on the things that I'd like to you do like best, to which is working with companies okay. and not having to deal with all the other issues that go with being a director. And he was a friend of mine, and so I said, okay, I'll help you out. It fit, back. it fit. Absolutely. It fit. Um, was there a couple of years? My parents moved to South Carolina. Okay. My dad. So wife's happy, you've got your parents there, everybody's happy. Everybody's doing great. Okay. okay. Dad goes to work for a big civil engineering firm, helping them out with some economic development type mm -hmm. projects. A few of the folks with that firm decide to split off and form their own company. Now this is in 2006, 2007. Okay. Uh, they form this new company in Columbia, South Carolina, and they want to have an economic development and a planning division. Right. My dad's hired as the economic development planning director, basically to go out and work with communities to help them develop economic development strategic plans and other types of studies. 
he needed help. Dad, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here because every other time when we were back in Maryland, he was either a director in Harford County or he was uh, developing properties in Harford and we were competing with each other. We never had a chance to ever work together until then. Mm. Well, the timing couldn't have been worse. Uh -oh. uh, 2008, 2007, the recession is starting to kick in. Not a good time for a startup engineering no, no. firm. The whole country suffering, right? The whole country is suffering and an engineering firm that's trying to get their footing and establish clients in a market that's already tough and is, and is, is on the decline, uh, it, it wasn't a good time. And Great we, idea, bad timing. Right. Well, we were doing well. We were doing economic development strategic plans for communities in South Carolina. We did a, an intermodal feasibility study for Central Louisiana. Uh, we did some other studies and, and we were bringing in some revenue for the company, but as a whole it was tough on sure. the engineering side. And I said, I'm going to make a decision. I can see where this may go. I miss economic development. I love working with the companies. This is great, but I want to get back into economic development. And at that point, I made the decision we were going to move, and we went to Atlanta. Big city, okay. Went back to the big city. Okay. Uh, you know, Greenwood, where you know where we were living in Abbeville. I you know, mentioned that Abbeville was twenty-seven thousand. Right. Greenwood was only seventy-six thousand, so it's bigger than Queen, Queen Anne's County, but not by a lot. Not by not much. By a lot. Atlanta. Five million residents. Big, <laughs> big metro. Welcome area. to metropolitan Atlanta. Yes. All right. So uh, I was hired to launch an economic development program for the city of Douglasville. Okay. They, tell us where that is. That a it's the suburbs. Uh, it's the suburbs of Atlanta. Okay. It's on the west side. It's right off of Interstate 20. So if you're heading towards Alabama and you, you've gone through Atlanta and you go you know, past Six Flags Amusement Park and you keep heading towards Alabama, That's it's about it. 30 miles west of downtown Atlanta. Oh, you're Hopefully. not far. Yeah. Not far at all. So I went to work for them and helped them launch their city program. Population of, of Douglasville is about 30,000 residents. So we had a lot of success with bringing in some IT firms, customer service operations, medical manufacturing. Well, the county to the north, Paulding County, did not have an economic development program. And nothing. And nothing. And, the, and it was the adjacent county. So a lot of the folks that I was working with in Douglasville were helping to put together and structure an economic development program for Paulding County. Paulding County, if you can believe this, and, and you're sitting down, Fred, yeah, so yeah. there are 159, 159 counties in Georgia. 159? 159. Mm. Paulding County was the 14th largest, the second yeah. fastest growing. Mm but had no business community. Nothing. Had a 76% out commute percentage. So they were all going to Atlanta. Then going to Atlanta suburbs. and Marietta. Okay, Marietta. So when you look at Queen Anne's County, and we hear the numbers are somewhere between you 55 and You see that route eight madness, yes. It's exactly like we had in, okay. in Paulding. Uh, but unlike Queen Anne's County, Paulding County did not have any real business parks, did not have any available industrial buildings, did not have an interstate. I mean, you know, we don't have an interstate here, but we have uh, three hundred one fifty. That's that counts. It, it yeah. counts. It's 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 not interstate, but it's uh, limited access sure. highway, and you can go sixty miles. You don't have all these lights. I mean, to give an example, in Paulding County, to get from Hiram, which was our eastern part of the county and our one of our industrial areas, you know, if you didn't have traffic lights, it would take you fifteen minutes, maybe or less, to get to I twenty. It would take you 30 to 40 minutes because of traffic. Yeah. So it was it was it, it it wasn't ideal, but we made the best of it. We created a brand image as a place that could support business. We started to recruit companies, international companies. We brought in Interroll, which was a Swiss manufacturer that opened its the first Class A industrial building in the county. Nice little county. Oh yeah, they opened in uh, they opened in March. Officially opened in March of. Uh, 2013, I'm sorry, of 2014, March 2014 was the official date. They had projected they would have 70 employees within three years. They had 100 by last fall. This is a Swiss company. Swiss company. Jamie, right. look, a little inside secret for me. I'm an educator, mm -hmm. so I know nothing about your field. How do you go to representatives from a Swiss company and say, come to my place, which has Basically nothing, <laughs> has no plan. What's the secret? Uh, not only that. <laughs> Obviously you've got the enthusiasm. Not, not only that, we, yeah. we actually got them to purchase a property that was part of a uh, D 
decommissioned spray field. I don't know if you know what a spray field I'm is. I'm afraid that. What's a spray field? A spray field is when you have a sewer treatment facility okay, we spray the and they water. treat the water and it comes out as gray water. It's treated water. <laughs> Golf courses use it. Did you have to give them your firstborn to get them a or what? <laughs> well, they loved how green the fields oh, were. Oh, I bet they were, yeah. <laughs> but it was a very, it was a rolling hill site. It had trees. It was very green because of all the gray water. Right. Um, and it was 100 acres. And it came in about the whole thing. No, no, they, they, no. they bought about 12, 12 acres. Okay. But the county had turned it over to the Industrial Building Authority, which was a separate group from us, mm -hmm. to develop as an industrial park, and really nothing had happened with it. And they were talking about, you know, because we didn't have any buildings, maybe doing a, a metal spec building. And I said, guys, you can't do this. This is a, this piece of property is a real asset, and it's got the right feel to it to be able to make it a corporate campus and 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 a you know combine nature because you had sure. you had a bike trail it's next to it. It's a nice to place. It. Right. So when we got uh, so we, we developed a plan to make it a class A business park. Interroll was looking for a location where they could manufacture their conveyor systems but also have a showroom where they could bring in customers from North America. Okay. So it had to have the right look and feel. We sold the president of North American Operations on that site. The incentives that we were able to put together, which was a combination of property tax abatements, the land was made available because the county owned it, and we were able to do a small grant for the project, and we had some tax credits that we were able to get by creating an opportunity zone there. So a lot of incentives that came into play, but the location worked for them. The local U.S. folks were sold on it. The next step was to convince the president and CEO from Switzerland that this Come was the over. site. Because we were competing with other locations were, in Atlanta yeah. and across the country. When the CEO came over from Switzerland and met with us, we took him out to the site, and he stood on top of the hill, and there was a big pond down there that had you know, got ducks, and it was just it was a beautiful setting. And he said, I can see our company here. This is where we okay, need to That be. was the image you wanted, right? And that was yeah. it. And so now the Class A building's there. It's been a success. They're, they're able to hire. We told them, this is what we tell businesses that are looking to come to Queen Anne's County. If you move to our community, you can hire gainfully employed individuals that are working outside this county. Sure. They are willing to stay closer to home. They may even take a slight pay cut to do it so they don't have to spend the time on the road commuting, and, and gas and away from family. Sure. And, and that's the same that thing that can Annapolis, happen Annapolis, Baltimore, Washington community gets old very quickly. Well, it was funny, Fred, you know, when I, when I moved up here in February for the first month, I was living in Annapolis. I, I found a roommate there, <laughs> and, and so I was renting week to week until I found my place that's over it. here in, in Queen Anne's County. And, and, and I used to say, you know, I love coming across that bridge each morning, going back at it's night, beautiful, it's beautiful. beautiful, it's great. And everybody said, believe me, once you get Wait. over here, you're not going to want right. to do it. They were right. Oh. Now that I'm over here, I'm like, I, I don't want to go back now. You know, I, I feel sorry for, and I, but I respect those people that every morning from 6 to 8 are making that run up Route 8 across the bridge. Mm -hmm. It's tough because there's in traffic increases, right? Gas is always a concern. You never right. know when there's an accident. So we want to keep those folks here. But anyway, let's go on. So you finish up. So how do we get you here? Is it back to Maryland or the attraction you know, of? You the know what? Uh, so you know, in, you know, I've been in 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 in, um, in Paulding County for you know, four years, right. and um, the election happened here. Okay. And when Larry Hogan Jr. won. And he ran on making Maryland more Pro business, business friendly. State, right. And everything, and, 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 and watching what was going on in the counties, all of, a lot of the counties moving in a very pro-business direction. Sure. I said, I want to be back there. I okay. want to be able to help my home state and see what I can do to make a difference. And I, and I missed it here. And so, you know, my first thought was I want to go work for the state of Maryland. And I started working on, on that. Um, Queen Anne's County job was not available at the time, okay. and I started making my contacts. Then my former boss and mentor, Bob Hannon, who is the Economic Development Director for Anne Arundel County, okay. had just been brought back for his second tour of duty in Anne Arundel. He had been there a number of years, left, and came back with the change in uh, County Executive. Mm -hmm. And I started talking with him. And he said, well, I don't have a permanent job for you, Jamie, 
but I can hire you on a contractual basis. And get you back home. And then you can start working to find Permanent a job, job and, and who knows, something may happen in here and, and it come over full time. So he had given me a three month contract with a three month renewal. And and I was set to go and then, you know, the Queen Anne's County job opened it up. Just I applied worked and the timing couldn't have been better. And uh, I came up, I interviewed for the job, and I was, I was, it, was on a, uh, it was on a Thursday that I interviewed for the job, and I was scheduled to move up that weekend. Mm. And I was going to start the Anne County job on Monday. It was that close. Well, we're glad you're on this side of the bridge. I, uh -huh. I lived in Anne Arundel County. I love Anne Arundel County. Let's keep you over here. Okay? Oh, I want to be here. I, now, this is great. Okay, you're going to have a great time. Now, Jamie, let me ask you this. Now that you're here, you're going to use TV a lot. We, I am. The public will know that there will be updates, and as soon as you get your feet in the ground a little more, there will be a lot of information coming out. Right now, is there anything the citizens can do to help you in terms of asking questions or offering advice? What would you? I how could we help you now? You know what? I, I have what I call an open door, open phone policy. Okay. Uh, citizens, businesses can call me anytime. Right. I give out my mobile number because that's the easiest way to reach me. And why don't you me. do that right now? 410-490-490. Four six nine five, and you don't mind people contacting you at all? No, okay. and I'll take calls if I'm available. I mean, I answer calls back and emails nine ten o'clock at night. I'll call uh, and answer emails in the Great. morning. I'm, it's an open door policy. You like citizens' input? I'm gonna tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because I don't care if you're a department head, a staff person, or a commissioner. Okay. The people of the community, the citizens, are our bosses. Period. That's who we work for. Okay, so you want to hear from them? Absolutely. Well, good. Well, Jamie, look at our time's just about out for this show, but I can ensure everybody, and I know you're going to use the station, mm -hmm. get your great ideas out there, and I think it's going to be exciting, okay? And I can't, look at it, when you bring those Swiss <laughs> people to Queen Anne's County, I want to be them. Hey, congratulations thank, thank on the job, and thank welcome you. again to Queen Anne's County, thank okay? You. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I'm Fred McNeil. You've been watching Fireside Chat. You've had with us Jamie Gilbert. Now, Jamie's going to spend, the, hopefully, the next 20 or 30 years here in Queen Anne's County bringing businesses to our community. It's going to be an exciting time. The governor and the local commissioners made a commitment to business, and, Jamie, you're buying into that. You're going to help Absolutely. lead it in that county, all right? Yes, sir. I really appreciate it. Thank all you, right. Fred. I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching Fireside Chat. My time's up. Thank you for your time, and we're going to see you next time. Thank you.